Welcome to episode 21 of an Earful podcast. On this episode, we have uh, the lead vocalist, Kyle, from the band Misery. We talk about the new EP, Loss, which is out now and available everywhere. We also go off on plenty of tangents, which you'll find more about. Uh, I learned how to garnish cheese on toast from this conversation, so I enjoy that one. I didn't expect that question, but, you know, it was... Uh... Throw it in there. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, um, and don't forget you can contact us, request guests, tell us if you just enjoyed an episode on all our social media at an earful podcast, and the video is also available on our YouTube channel. Enjoy. So we're joined by Kyle of Misery, the vocalist. Hi, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, it's not too bad, man. Yourselves? Yeah, yeah, we're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, with the with the double mats here. Yeah. So easy to remember for you, <laughs> making it as easy as possible. Oh, uh, trust me, my life needs to be as easy as possible. You guys are just adding on to it now. It's just <laughs> mwah, it's perfect. <laughs> that, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, how has your first show of the tour been yesterday? Yeah, it was absolutely crazy, man. Like, it's it's always nice to play your hometown, like, as a first stop off. And we managed, managed to sell out the venue, so it was absolute chaos from the very beginning. And it's it's just one of those things, isn't it, that you, you start off a tour and you start on a high point, and you're just like, you know what, this tour is going to be amazing. I cannot wait for the rest of the shows. It's like setting it off as, like, your first show is incredible. They're only going to grow, really, aren't they? Yeah, you know, exactly, first man. show back feels a little... Yeah, it's a little bit rusty. You're yeah. a little bit. Oh, is it gonna? Is it gonna be okay? Is everything gonna be all right? Is the backing tracks gonna work? Is my voice gonna be okay? But mate, it went. It was amazing. Excellent. So you're at uh, Milton Keynes tonight. Is that right? Yeah, we're down at the Crawford Arms. It's, uh, it's such a nice venue. Like the actual stage itself is huge, so it gives us plenty of time and and like space to jump around. All the space for the activities and the accommodation here as well it's like a massive band pad so it's us and tether and we're just going to have a good couple of drinks and just enjoy ourselves tonight have you guys toured before is this the first time you've you guys have toured together or have you played shows before as well yeah we played a couple of shows uh, before um we started off i think it was in mid 2018 i'm trying to wrap my brains with all the records of all the shows the spot, and everything because i've got I've, I've got one of those memories that i can just cycle back to and be like actually that was the day and that was the band and that was the time <laughs> that we did that thing but it's i think it was around about mid july mid august time that we played the old blue last and that's where we first properly played with tether because we've known justin the vocalist for years and years like he put us on our first london show so we've been eternally grateful to him like since the goddamn start but this is the first time we've properly toured together like we played numerous amounts of shows and now between we've always been like we should really do a tour like that thing that you always do with other bands (laughs) yeah it's just like yeah we should totally tour together man and then it's actually come around quite nice because um uh, the band that we were supposed to be on tour with uh were, i want to say is sworn amongst no it's not it's uh, amongst thieves they had to drop out a couple of weeks back and tether just stepped in which was just like yep we're gonna do that now excellent i like that it's one of those um bands that you're always bumping into and then you like you're a massive fan of them yourself yeah yeah it's it's, it's so nice actually like be able to take these boys on tour as well because it's their first proper tour as a band so it's very much a trial by fire with them because we go very excessive very hard and all the goddamn time they've got to be accustomed to touring lifestyle straight away with us <laughs> put them in the deep end immediately exactly what what better way to start touring rather well, than having one of those tours that is just like you know it, it's kind of okay and it's muddling along maybe you're not with a band of your same genre or like it's a little bit hit and miss on shows and that lot no yeah. just throw them in with us and we'll show them a damn good time on the road that's what you want especially if you're having fun and you're making sure the fans have fun yeah, it's if that's the thing. It's it's all about make sure that everything is fun, from being on the road together to where you're crashing with the accommodation to playing shows, having fun with the fans. Everything is about just having fun. Because if we take this too much of, as a serious business, it gets very old very goddamn quickly. Oh, that's so true. Like I remember, I was in a band once, and I was just trying to focus so much on it, and straight away I got very bored, very uninterested. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you couldn't have nailed that more, really, I don't think. 
Ah, there you, there you go. Some wise words of wisdom from Kyle and Misery yeah, there. Yeah, you just gave me some PTSD <laughs> flashback of uh, my old band. Thanks, I'm, mate. I'm so sorry, man. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So, um, as we know, your new EP, Lost, came out on November the 8th. How's the reaction been so far to the new material now? Does it feel to finally get out there and just play your new stuff? Yeah, it's, it's getting out there a lot more. Like, with the Safety First EP that we released last year, it was the first time that we'd had a proper PR campaign behind it. It was the first time it was properly presented in front of, like, industry people, in front of um, reviewers, and a lot of people that hadn't heard us before. And that, like, it got a really, really good reception. So with this one, we just wanted to build up on that, get it out to the same people and then get out to even more people and see how their reaction was. And to be fair, we couldn't have asked for a better reception so far. Like, it's just, it's been amazing hearing it from people in like Germany, Poland, like over in America, people are just like, yeah, like we really like your tunes. We're like, how the hell did you guys listen to it (laughs) all the way over there? Like, how did you get your ears into it? But we're, we're just thankful that they have listened to it, you know? It's crazy. Well, I saw that Karang have got hold of it and like Metal Hammer and that. So that's uh, that's a great step for yourself as well. Yeah, man. Like I've been reading those magazines since I was like a tiny, tiny. So actually seeing our names in the review section, getting like press and um, press releases on there, and like seeing our names in the CDs and stuff like that is is absolutely wild for me. Yeah. So. Like, if, if, if you had told me like a ten years back, like eighteen year old Kyle, oh yeah, you're you're gonna be in Metal Hammer, you're gonna be a Kerrang and shit like that, I would have been like, nah, get, get the fuck out of here, man. Yeah, I saw as well that you had uh, Iggy Pop as well, uh, picking you out to play on the radio. Like that's that's insane. Yeah, I- I- Iggy Pop's a fan of misery. It's like what? yeah. That's not something I'm- I would have thought of, I'll be honest, but it's fucking mad. Mate, it's not something we would have thought of, but <laughs> we we absolutely loved it because um like all of us were listening live into it because Iggy Pop's Iggy Pop for fuck's sake. Like he's the godfather of punk. Yeah, he's a godfather of hardcore. Like he's still going harder than any of us youngsters are going <laughs> at his fucking advanced age, and still looking better and probably pulling more pussy than we will ever fucking imagine. Because <laughs> this is Iggy goddamn pop. And we were listening to it, and it got like right towards the end. We were just like, "Is he actually going to play our song?" And then he started talking about Donald Trump. We were like, "All oh, right, here we go. <laughs> this is the song." And he starts playing it. And if you if you listen to it back, he forgets to actually mute his mic. And oh, as yeah. soon no, as no the way. first drop, as soon as the first drop comes in, you hear him go, "Oh God!" <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, "Yeah, we got that validation from Iggy Pop. We are going places now, guys." <laughs> Do you know, what I loved not that like Iggy Pop alone played your record, but you got to hear his own reaction to it as well. No yeah, other that's band absolutely got that. Mad. <laughs> Mate, if only you could have sampled that, like his reaction to it, you could add it before I could drop in one of your like new songs or something. <laughs> That is an idea. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to give you credit on the next uh, uh, next EP or album for that one because that's a major that idea. Is, Thank it. you. It's all right. <laughs> oh. Creative genius flowing. So, See, this is this is what you need. This is what you need, guys, on the podcast. You need a couple of creative ideas being thrown around that you see maybe happen a year and a year and a half later and be like, we did that. Definitely. We both did that. Yeah. <laughs> and then force you and bully you to come back. That's what we're doing. <laughs> So was there a different approach you took when you was writing the new material? Uh, uh, sorry, I couldn't hear you on that one. You cut up a little bit. Sorry, uh, was there a different approach that you took to when you was writing the new material? Yeah, there's... Uh, whenever we start writing, we tend to go around certain themes that we're feeling at the time. With Safety First, it was very much a political kind of from because of how the political uh, like world was changing when we were writing it. We were just like, right, we don't like Donald Trump. We don't like Theresa May. They're two major figures that we don't like, and we've got a chance to write something and voice our opinion on this. So we're going to write about that. The other tracks were very much just being angry, hardcore kids. Like, do you know, you know those tracks you listen to, and it's just like, yeah, they're, they're fucking angry right yeah, now, you can't man. Help like, but churn your face and nod along. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You make those got uh, those uh, those faces, and it's like, oh, they're, they're just going for it right now. <laughs> but with the new EP loss, we wanted to go a lot more personal. We wanted to like really take an introspective look at ourselves, how our relationships, both like friendships, relationships, the relationships that we have between each other, how we look at ourselves, 
we wanted to really take aboard everything that's happened to us in the last three, four years and kind of focus on the personal side of things rather than just being angry for the sake of being angry about certain things that we wanted to be angry about the right things this time. Yeah. And that's, that's generally how we wrote this one. It was a lot of times me and our drummer here, like bashing, bashing way ideas towards each other with lyrics and just really trying to hit home on some of the subjects that we really wanted to talk about. So when you choose a theme like that for an EP, how do you, where do you start? Do you just got themes in general that you're going to dip into with lyrical ideas and then, you know, you've got your musical aspect differently. Where did you start? I think with this one, it was very much a case of the lyrics that I'd already written a couple of um, things lyrically Kier had written a couple of things lyrically and it wasn't so much that we went out to make a concept to EP yeah. that was based around just the entire subject of being personal. It's just every single song that we wrote, like all the lyrics, the dynamics within the songs, it all kind of spun into the same collective idea of it being very intro introspective and very personal. So I, I don't think it was a case that we had a starting point and we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and then it's all going to come together like this. It was just very much a natural, free-flowing environment where everything just worked together and it was based around a common theme because that's how we were feeling at the time. Yeah, which is probably best because, like we mentioned earlier, if you focused on we're going to make this concept record, then all of a sudden you'll lose interest and in you'd overthink things. and. Go yeah, like exactly. Yeah, it's 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 way more fun and it's a way more freeing in a recording and band environment if you don't think about it too much. Because as soon as you start thinking about it too much, you're going to overthink. And because you're overthinking, you're making either shitty lyrics or shitty breakdown ideas <laughs> just to fit in to like, those little things, you know? Yeah. So when did you first get into the hardcore scene? Uh, what, did it come through like a... So, so for me, like, uh, like the little bit of hardcore music that I listened to came from, stemmed from probably like Asking Alexandria and bands like that, way, way back in the day. Yeah, it's uh, and like Devil Wears Prada and people like that. Yeah, it's it's really weird for me because um, I'm trying to think of all the bands that I listened to like back in the day when I was 14, like 14, 15. Uh, what were their names? What were their names? Um, uh, the, the song I've Got Straight Edge. Um, seeing Red, I know Slayer did a cover of it. Uh, what are their fucking names right now? They're like <laughs> they they release like two CDs and they are like pioneers of the hardcore, like the DC hardcore scene. I can't remember their goddamn we'll, names we'll right now. Up. We'll we'll try Please. and look. <laughs> yeah, like try and Google it for me, please, because I'm gonna be really really annoyed <laughs> if I don't know this right now. Oh, what are their names? Um, this is a tricky one. Wait, name name a song again. Um, it's Seeing I've got red. straight edge. I've got straight edge. Let's try that. Or it might just be called Straight Edge because they were one of the like Straight Edge DC hardcore bands. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm really <laughs> trying to remember, and this this is damaging my heart. <laughs> this is damaging my hardcore rep so hard right now. We'll have I can't to edit it the out. First, <laughs> the first band that I want to talk about. Can you not find it? No. No. Mm. Oh, that's going to really annoy me. But anyway, like I, I got like when I was 14, I managed to go in HMV and I was like scowling through because I when I was growing up, I was listening to a lot of Brian Adams, a lot of U2, Incubus, In Excess. Oh, yes. Very, Incubus, yes. Mate, really, really good stuff that like my parents um, uh, turned me on to from a very, very young age. And I was like, you know what? This sounds cool, but I want something a little bit harder. I want something like a little bit more like scruffy not so well produced like not so clean and i managed to find this demo the um, one of the guys behind the desk recommended me and i was like you know what go on i'm gonna buy this with all of my pocket money that i've saved up for the past two goddamn weeks and i'm gonna spin this shit hard and like listening to to that cd and i really want to say the band's name but i can't <laughs> goddamn remember it it's so annoying but i i I've always had the inclination of hardcore bands like Black Flag, like straight from the early days, yeah, like yeah. Henry, Henry Rollins as like a figurehead for hardcore is 
he's he's just so intense he's so he's so deliberate in the way that he has his personality in front of you and he is upfront and confrontational at all times and that's one of the main things that drew me into the hardcore scene and then after that i kind of got edgeweight into metal metalcore like lamp of god kill switch engage yeah. chimera shadows fall like all the really really cool stuff that was happening at the time and from there, it's kind of like parlayed. I didn't get so much sucked into like the Black Veil Brides, kind of like asking Alexandria kind of side of things, because I went through a massive, massive elitist metal stage where I was just like, that's not metal, man. <laughs> like, like, you know, those guys that yeah, are still yeah. like, I, I, I know guys that are like in their 30s, 30s, 5s, and they're just like, oh, that's still not cool, man. Like, oh, I look at their hair. It's so friend. well produced. Yeah. Yeah, oh, we all, we all have that one friend. It's just like, open your fucking mind for once, man. <laughs> Seriously. Get out of your little ball inside of your uh, like collective comfort zone. Step out of it. And there's actually a world outside of there that's really fucking cool, you know? To yeah. be fair, at the time I was stuck in my like scene slash emo phase, like so bands like oh, asking yeah. Alexandria, I was just like, oh my god, especially when oh, they first but, came on the scene. <laughs> but mom, it's ne- it's not a phase. It's not a phase at all. <laughs> It's never it, like if I still had hair, I still have it sweeped over to one side and blocking one of my eyes because you know, <laughs> it's, I've always got that emo scene kid in, inside of me. So yeah, I've always wondered. I, I was the same as well. I always had the fringe blocking one eye, sat in classroom, like. I don't know why. Yeah. Why I did that? I look back and I'm like, why? <laughs> it's questionable. Mate, oh, let, let's be fair though. Like from from Kyle to Matt to Matt, it was basically like 25% of it was trying to be cool, and the other 75% of it was that we are crushes on scene and emo girls, and it was just like this is the only way I'm ever going to fucking get one of them. Yeah, yeah. I think you've nailed, <laughs> nailed the uh, nailed that on the head though with that one. Yeah. Let, <laughs> it's a bit too let's true. be honest <laughs> with ourselves here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it worked for me back in the day, so fuck it. (laughs) (laughs) That's why. But but, uh, then, like, going back onto question, because I have to drag this out of the uh, the little talkity-talkity bit to get back onto track here. It was uh, very much a case of, like, just listening to a lot of metalcore bands and then transitioning to the modern hardcore stuff. Stuff like um, uh, Cancer Bats, one of my all-time favourite bands, Let Live absolutely fantastic bands uh every time i die like keith buckley is a fucking lyrical genius and god to me man like there is something about that man that makes him jesus in my eyes you know but it's it's very much that transition of i started with the old school hardcore then i went into like metal metalcore turning onto the scene and emo side and then i kind of transitioned back around into a nice little circle and it was just it's just a really cool transition because I, I feel like I've got a really good appreciation of all of those scenes and all those musics that we can take and like just enjoy for what they were, especially at the time, because some of them were fucking atrocious. <laughs> like, let's be let's be real again. <laughs> yeah. Some of it was fucking awful back in the day, but we still hold on to it because nostalgia is a major fuck up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, speaking of cancer bats, how was working yeah. with Liam Cormier? It was an absolute dream come true, man. Like my favorite vocalist of all time coming down to a studio in Bista to work with us and work on the lyrics with me personally. And it's like, how the fuck, what happened? What happened in my former life that I deserved this? It's like, <laughs> well, clearly but, he's a massive fan of the, uh, the band. Well, I mean, yeah, like hopefully he still enjoys the tunes. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I can't see him I mean, not working with you if you didn't enjoy him. So, yeah, exactly, man. Well, he got back on stage with us as well um, when we supported him in Oxford. So he obviously enjoys the tune enough to do it with us. Yeah. So how did that come about? Like working with him, and I didn't even know it was, you, you wrote with him, which I imagine is an amazing experience for yourself. It was. It was really, really weird. Like we played in Brighton. It must have been August or september of 2018 this is my uh my record keeping mind going back again <laughs> and uh we got asked to come down for one of the metal to the masses shows just to headline one of the gigs and we were like cool it, it's right by the sea we're gonna have some fun we're gonna you know have some ice cream get some chips like yell at some seagulls because they stole, they stole all of our food it's gonna be a dope our show and we get to it show goes fine right until like the last 30 seconds of the last song and the power just goes. Oh, shit. Like, yeah, like all of our amps go off, our backing track goes off, our lights go off, like everything is off. And we're just like, well, fuck. 
Damn, we were just about to do the last breakdown and really go for it, but now we're going to have to hold all of this aggression and anger in. Ah. Anyway, about five minutes later, they managed to get up like a little bit of the power on stage. We've got our amps out, but our back track isn't working for whatever reason. We haven't got our lighting rig to work. So basically, the things that make us sound good and look good are both fucked. <laughs> <laughs> So we're like, fuck, what the hell should we do right now? And one of our friends in the crowd was just like, play Hail Destroyer, because they they know that we practice it just because we're massive Cancer Bats fanboys. And we we just go for it. We're just like, yep, fine, fuck it. Half of us can't remember it, but that's all right, because I scream, so nobody's really listening to me. Nobody's really <laughs> listening to the guitars either, because it's like a cranky and like distorted as all fuck, so they can kind of hear what's going on. They can kind of nod along to it, because they recognise it, but not so much that they're paying attention, and thank God they were. It's having fun. That's what matters. <laughs> exactly. And, like, we played, we were packing down, we were saying goodbye to people, you know, when, like, right at the end of a show, where you're really, really sweaty, you're trying to pack down as fast as possible. Be like, yeah, cheers, man, appreciate it. Uh, thanks for coming around to the set, blah, 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 blah. Sound guy comes over to us, and he's just like, oh, yeah, that Hail, Hail Destroyer cover was sick. Like, I've sent it over to Liam from Cancer Bats. We were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, are, are you shitting us? And he's like, oh, no, I'm, like, the uh, sound engineer for them when they come over to the UK. Fucking what? Hell. Yeah, and we're like, do you reckon he'd be up for uh, doing a guest spot by any chance? And he's like, I'll throw you in an email chain with him and see what he thinks. How did you feel? It's, like, uh, at that like moment? A, at that moment, we it's, it's one of those things where you're just like, is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Like, me and Keir were driving back from Brighton being like, we might have Liam Cormier on a goddamn track. <laughs> like, what, what the hell is happening right now? Like, our show majorly fucked up. And then we played a bad uh, Hail Destroyer cover and we might get Liam on track because of it. It's like, what? So a, f a, f a few weeks later, like we actually got an email from Liam being like, hey guys, I'm coming over in January to like visit a couple of friends, ride around the Lake District on my motorcycle and that lot. Like, do you want me to come down to a studio? <laughs> it's like, yeah, of course we fucking do. <laughs> you're not just going to, you're not just going to offer us something like that. And then us be like, oh no, man, like we're too busy. Like, <laughs> Actually, we can't, I'm we can't we, we, yeah, we can't fit you into our schedule. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Leo. It's like, no, fuck, you're coming down. You can spend as much time as you want here, please. We insist. And it was just really, really weird. Like, cause I, I've met him a couple of times. I've known him for the, the better part of like, two three years because i've seen cats pass about 20 25 30 times like yeah. I've, I've lost count by this point but actually like standing in kia's mum's kitchen having a cup of coffee with him talking about motorcycles and him going over to the middle east and stuff like that it's a really weird experience i can like, imagine uh, yeah have, having this guy that is like your favorite like idolized vocalist of all time and he's just chatting to you like a normal person with a cup of coffee in his hand being like yo <laughs> what's up how's it going guys it's, <laughs> it's one of those really like, weird. pinch yourself moments yeah i did have to i had to go outside for a smoke and be like is this actually happening right now <laughs> is is liam actually there or am i just having a major trip because somebody like put something in my drink last night like i'm still feeling this right now but no it was him and Man, that guy is allowed in the studio. Like his voice is fucking huge. So, did it's you have the real. track like already written by then, and you just had him come in with his own lyrics, and or did you have the lyrics written down for him? Oh no, we um uh, we had it all written for him. We had the lyrics, we had the placement, we had everything sorted for him. I did his guide tracks as well, um, so that when he came into the studio, he'd already listened to the music, and he had a couple of questions about some of the lyric placement and like the connotations and certain accents of some of the words that we went through together and we were just like all right cool if you take out that bit then you're not gonna fall short on that word so you're gonna have more breath control for the next bit and like really diving deep into it which is something i'm not really that good at but i had to try and impress liam so i was like yeah man that sounds like a really good idea but what about this what about that you know that's my and yeah it's it's abs it's such a weird weird experience but i love i love talking about it though because it's just it happened i'm like yeah, yeah. it fucking happened guys <laughs> it's like we one of those it. dream come true moments isn't it because especially someone yeah. you look up to and you know no don't want to say idolize but you you do mm. in that industry when you want to be in a band and you're you know you're gaining attention um, yeah i love about that story though is if you were to send something off to liam it would not mm. be that show 
and the thing he probably likes about it is the fact that you did that. Mm. It's probably good that it was we- out of your hands that someone contacted him. Yeah, it, it was much easier having a third party be like, hey, you might want to work with these guys instead of us just being like, yeah, come on, like, <laughs> get on one of our tracks, you know? We would have looked like absolute dicks trying to convince him to do that. <laughs> but luck- luckily enough, like, from something that was so bad at the time that we thought, shit, this has fucked up our entire show. Like, just having that strange, weird mindset that you always get into if anything fucks up during the show, you're just like, that one thing out of everything else fucked it up in your head yeah something so great and so amazing came about from it and then the fact that you've took that had fun with it those fans will remember that you know unique yeah. moment at that gig yeah not uh, like i'm not even sure like how many people from that gig actually know that this has happened that's the thing so we're, we're going to be heading back to brighton at the exact same venue and we'll probably see pretty much all of the same people and then i'll, I'll probably say something like yeah this is a, the, this was the venue that we got Liam Cormier to <laughs> feature on one of our tracks. You guys were there. You know what happened. Are and then half them, prob- half of them probably go, wait, was that you guys? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Are you going to turn the power off halfway through your gig as well just to uh, hopefully something um, new comes <laughs> from it? Mate, mate, that's another fucking idea. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully that's we get the same happened. sound engineer and we do Hail Destroyer again. We might get him on the, uh, on the next one. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, so, like he's. Go on, B. No, continue, please, please. I was just going to say. Um, <laughs> so, did you say you wrote with him? Well, it's not so much that we wrote with him. It was when he came over. There was certain parts of the words and how they were presented as a sentence because right. So it's every adjusting. every yeah, it's just adjusting it to his natural vocal range and his natural vocal style because every, every vocalist has their own like way of doing certain things, especially with certain like little parts of words that it just needed to be natural for him rather than it being natural for me and him trying to imitate me, you know? Yeah, of course. And that way, on the actual record, because I can hear it, Yeah, there's a, yeah. a distinct difference that blends itself to the actual track really nicely. Mm. Mm. Definitely. I hope it comes across that way anyway, because it, it seemed way more natural with him after we'd sat down and been like, okay, these parts need to be changed just a little bit just so it flows better for him because when he originally did it we listened back to it and we was just like it's cool but it sounds very very muddy on certain parts you know yeah which is is good that you took your time with that how long did you have uh while you know writing and recording the ep well uh, kia's got a studio so like we've been working on this ep before the last ep came out right okay i see so rather than having that, like, we've got a strict deadline that we need to get into the studio with, like, we've got X amount of money that we can spend on studio time. Now, like, it was very much a free-flowing environment throughout all of our lives that we'd come in and we'd do things when we had the time and then we'd write by ourselves and then bring more ideas in and just, like, really kind of nail it over time rather than being so rushed to just do these tracks and to get it recorded. So we probably spent the better half of, like, a good year actually writing the tracks yeah has it been one of those where you've had things that have just been sat there and you've left it a while and came back with fresh ears and then all of a sudden you've got this new perspective on what you've previously written yeah kind of um i'm just trying to think if there's any like glaring tracks from the new ep that we kind of writ over and over and over again um it, the only one that I can really like strike into my mind straight away would probably be the title track "Loss." That was the one of the first ones that we wrote uh, in amongst other songs that we didn't include on the EP or just kind of got flushed away afterwards, is like riff soup. Yeah, you know that that kind of thing where it's like all of these riffs are cool, but none of them work together. Yeah. So we we take ideas from all the other songs, we place it around, be like, actually, that riff could work there, that riff could work there. This breakdown would actually be cool if we did it half time, then insert it here with a certain ambience, all that stuff. And yeah, Lost was one of those ones that we wrote r- like roughly at the start. We listened back to it a couple of weeks later, and we were like, okay, like let's change some of that bit, let's change some of that bit. Kept it on the back burner again, went back to it about two months, and we were like, actually, no, if we work with this part, and then I've got a certain vocal style that I can do over this part. Like that, w- that was the last one I think that we finished recording and that was one of the first ones that we wrote. So that's probably the one that like 
got changed the most out of everything. Yeah, that's a long period of time to be uh, moving things around. Did you ever have a, a point while going through all of these where, I know personally, when I've been writing certain things, I'll hear it too many times and then I don't want to touch it? Yeah, there's there's always that. You work on a track for so long and you rewrite it God knows how many times. I'm pretty sure we do that with every single track that we write. That we write it, listen to it, rewrite it, listen to it and go, I don't even, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to write lyrics to this. I don't want to have to work on any of the fucking vocals for this because I'm so burnt out just listening to this thing over and over and over again. Like it's, it, it's just one of those things that happens, like especially with us because we've got so much time to actually get into a recording studio and work on these songs that we just get burnt out so quickly on every single song because we just go bam, 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 bam over and over and over again. Especially when you've got that much freedom in the studio to do that sort of thing as well. Yeah, God bless Keir for actually having a studio, man. It works. It works out so well. Yeah, that's a nice thing to have in a band. That's that's the thing. We've always um, uh, from the start. We've always tried and had a DIY ethic to it. That all of the graphic design for at least ninety percent of the uh, t-shirts for the album artworks and stuff like that. Like I do all of that. Keir does all of the actual like work behind the scenes with um, developing our backing tracks and actually doing the recordings and that lot. And like other things here and there that Charlie and um, Harvey do, like we've always had a DIY ethic that if we can do it ourselves and save money, we're going to do that. Yeah. So you've all got so the, that we, like, you've all got like the perfect mix then, really. Like it's literally like the perfect like scenario to actually start your band and get to the point where you're at now. Yeah, exactly, man. It's it's really cool that we've got all of these things to actually work work on ourselves privately away from the band and then it all comes together nicely because like we've always said it's the diy ethic that if we can save money by doing it ourselves doing a good job of it working really hard on it then all that money can be pumped into other aspects of it like pr um touring management all of that other stuff with the scene as well do you know the diy aspect isn't something that has been lost it's always been there and um yeah that's what makes the scene and your band as well such a standout thing Ooh. the hardcore scene has always been about diy like it's it's always been about helping each other where maybe you spend a bit of money getting accommodation and your mates are just like nah come on like there's five of us already in here but we can squeeze in at least three or four more of you guys <laughs> yeah like doing diy shows as well like your friends would just set up uh, in a fucking tiny basement for 50 people and charge two or three quid on the door just to get punters in. Like It's that DIY ethic that will keep this scene alive no matter what. It's one of the reasons I think why punk is still such a, a massive thing. You know, it's an individual's creativity, and it's so, so different from what's commercially being pumped into. Oh, know, yeah, for sure. Thing. Yeah. For sure. I mean, you you look at so many manufactured bands, so many manufactured like pop idol kind of bullshit that you see on the radio you see on tvs and all this and then you've got sweaty punk gigs going down the road for that five or six quid to 20 or 30 people but that individuality and that showmanship that they have is way better than what the fuck is on the radio like i've always had that mentality and i wouldn't even say that that's an elitist kind of thing it's just very much a, a matter of fact thing well i think it's actually the opposite of that elitist uh, point of view um because you're appreciating someone else's art and um yeah yeah I completely agree. It's all like mm. a massive community, like in a way, because I know Idols have done the same. So the the new punk band, punk band Idols from uh, Bristol, I believe. Bristol, yeah. 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 Um, me and Matt caught them uh, back at Download 2017. It was literally like 50 people uh, watching them, but everybody was loving it. And then literally two years later, it's like they it blew up. They're playing like all these massive places, like Alexandra, what was it, Alexandra Palace? Yeah, you get to see bands grow, and you know more people appreciate the art. But they've kept made. that community as well, haven't they? So yeah. they've got the, the the Facebook page going with the all these love and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so man, it's, it's for the punk scene. It's just it's crazy, isn't it? It's absolutely fucking mental. Like it's it's really weird being able to like be friends with a band or see a band when there's only like ten or fifteen of you guys in that room being like, all right, these these guys sound cool, and then seeing them three years later, and they are just this huge behemoth of <laughs> fucking sound and a live show, and it's like, what the fuck? Like I saw these guys three years back, and there were fifteen people here. That's incredible. That's crazy. I fucking love that. 
But again, it's through that support and through that community that that band has got to that point where they're at. And yeah, like, obviously, as long as people keep doing that, which, like you said, uh, everyone's always turning up to these shows, supporting each other, and like I said, playing like the really low door prices is again another great idea to pull those people in. And like some people might be going to those gigs with like who don't even like that sort of music, but they might come out with a different mindset. Yeah, it's it's a really weird. <sighs> Like, I think it's happened a couple of times with us where, like, you've got a couple of people that are really, really not into the heavy, screamy kind of, like, hardcore stuff. And that's cool. Like, you like what you like. I'm never going to take that away from you. Like, I'm never going to force our music or our live shows on you. But seeing a couple of people come down and at the end of the night being like, actually, you know what? I don't like that kind of music. But you guys are so fucking cool. And so it is, it's really weird going to shows and having that kind of reception and seeing it happen to other bands as well. It's just, it's, it's really nice to see people open their minds up a little bit. Yeah. And appreciate and actually, what you appreciated about those bands. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah. Speaking of like all this sort of thing, this comes into it. What was mm. the hardcore scene like when you first got involved with the music compared to how it is today? I mean, <sighs> with the oxford scene in general like it's very much is very much been about like pop folk indie because oxford's always been a major indie city yeah like it's it's just one of those things that we can never get away from so the hardcore and the metal scene that lot was very very minute it was very small like there'd maybe be two or three gigs a month that i'd be able to get down to and it was it was cool it was what it was at the time and it was a nice introduction to it but now like seeing about it maybe 12 13 years later because i am getting on my age now like I'd, I'd, I'd never like to admit that but i am getting on in my age right now uh, god yeah it was 13 13 bloody years ago that was um seeing it now like you've got three or four bands that i could see every single night seven days a week if i wanted to it's absolutely ridiculous to see the progress that we've had. Yeah. I know I've got friends that are who are massively into the hardcore scene and they're travelling to like Germany and all sorts of places to go support these bands from like yeah. literally just all over the globe, which is crazy because like if I was going to Germany to go watch a band, it'd be someone who are like really, really like I'm into, but like like these are just bands that like yeah I've just listened I just listened to them on the side and yeah I was gonna go watch them in Germany they're a playing different with... breed of fans yeah isn't it? it's just crazy yeah it's like, that's that's hardcore in itself yeah. <laughs> yeah that's that's proper hardcore that is that's way more hardcore than anything that we bloody do <laughs> <laughs> yeah I've I've got a couple of friends that will go over to um to a lot of the European cities and just go out to gigs just go out to see shows from some of the local bands or like maybe some of those mid level touring bands and they'll be like you know what this is so fucking cool. I'm in a different country. I have no idea what they're speaking at the moment <laughs> around me, but I feel at home, you know, because that's, that's what gigs should be. It should be about being at home in a venue with people who are like-minded or maybe not so much like-minded, but are there for the exact same reason as everyone else to enjoy themselves, to have a good time, to enjoy the sets of uh, these bands and just, be free for that couple of hours that you've got there yeah 100 percent. that's what makes that community of you know the the fan base of these bands so incredible yeah. i think it is it is just that community feel that we've all got the same mindset that we go out like we go to enjoy ourselves and we go out to enjoy a gig we don't we don't go to any gigs with malice like we don't go to any gigs that with negative emotions we always come out with positive emotion yeah no it's it's always to have fun isn't it speaking of yeah that though with obviously the theme of this ep being loss um yeah it's quite a you know personal it sounds and difficult yeah thing so i imagine this is like reliving some sort some you know difficult things for some of the bands yeah it's that's the thing we the the concept of the ep is about loss in the fact that everybody experiences loss in different ways like you you can lose a friend through death 
you can lose yourself inside a relationship you can lose contact with your parents and just yeah. feel those negative emotions and that are like harboring inside of you that doesn't ever go away the, there, there are some traumas in life and there are some things that happen in life that you can never ever shake away from you no matter how how long you sit on it no matter how many times you go to therapy no matter how you try and fill that void it doesn't ever go away and it's it's a really really hard thing to like both speak about especially like on a one-to-one level with anybody because i'm sure i'm sure you guys have these kind of um, traumas as well yeah absolutely there there are things that you you kind of want to talk about but you can't really talk to -to one-to-one with anybody or like openly speak your mind about yeah but that's that's the kind of the like the the, i want to say the ego of it the ego of the entire subject to present it in a way that you can listen to it and yeah you might be reminded of things that have happened in your past you might be reminded of that thing that has happened to you and those traumas that you've gone through but our music has always had that positive spin that it's a fact of you are not alone Mm. there are people around you that have gone through things that you've not gone through things that you have gone through and things that maybe they don't know that you've gone through but it's all about being here this is about getting into a, a more healthy mindset and being more positive about the things that you've lost because you can always build on those things your your past is your past and yet you can hold on to it and you can comfort yourself in it but by the same token it's a more positive healthy mental kind of release to actually listen to this music and help yourself through it yeah I, I love that um aspect of on the front of it it's a fun heavy hardcore brutal song Mm. but then if you look into it you're at least left coming out with a positive message yeah and that's that's always been our our motive that or i guess it's (laughs) sorry (laughs) Uh, that's all it's just one of those things where you see friends around it's just like hey how's it going sorry i'm on the phone right now guys (laughs) (laughs) but we've 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 always had that positive end note on all of our songs that we're about progressing we're about being a better more motivating band despite our song lyrics uh, despite the way the you know our band is called misery therefore we have to be miserable guys <laughs> all the time kind of thing that we are about being positive at the end of the day and working through everything that's happened to us to be better and hopefully we install that on in other people as well yeah absolutely um mm. have you got when you were deciding what to play live have you got a mixture of you know your previous eps and the new one or are you playing the full new ep in full uh no the only song that we're not playing on this tour anyway we might cycle it in at some point is uh the track courage okay and that's uh, that's just from the way that the songs will flow in and out between themselves that we we wanted to have a healthy mix of at least three to four songs from the previous EPs that we know that people go for yeah. and then to mix it in with the other ones. We only had five songs and we've got six songs on this EP. So we were like, Oh, <laughs> which one are we going to have to cut? Which one are we going to have to cut? And unfortunately it was courage, but we, we've still got a healthy dose of both the two previous EPs and this one on the tour cycle, at least. And that'll, that'll change in time. Like yeah. always does that every band. Yeah, you mix it up. You you've got to keep having fun. As we this tends tends to be the theme of this podcast, it seems. Uh, you've got yeah. to have fun being in that band and doing it live. And if that means taking one song out and replacing it with another, then it's a no brainer. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, that's just what has to happen, unfortunately. Yeah. Regardless if it's that's one person's favorite song, it it happens. Yeah, yeah. And that oh, that will suck so much though. That if somebody comes out to a show and they're just like, "Why didn't you play Courage?" Just <laughs> be like oh i'm so sorry just we couldn't do it this time come and see us next time we'll have it in now i promise you i'll put money on that that happens tonight to you know (laughs) i I swear to god if it does i'm gonna have to phone you guys back up and be like all right there's some money exchange here (laughs) you guys were right two creative ideas and now we've jinxed you there we go i know man (laughs) well give with the left hand take with the right hand and all that (laughs) Well, um, 
we've warned you already, but we've got a, a section called Pet Peeves about yep. what pisses you off. You seem thrilled about it. <laughs> oh, I'm so thrilled about this. Can I? Oh, yeah, sure. Let's let's get this over and done with. I pet try. I try so section. hard not. I try so hard not to like be a negative person and have pet peeves. Like, I'm so. <laughs> I try so hard during my day, but there are some things that you just you just can't take. You know. Well, this is where you can get it all out of your system anyway, so go for it. All right, cool. Slow walkers, right? You We've guys had can this get one before, on yeah. this one. <laughs> Slow walkers fuck me off to no degree. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be there on the sidewalk. I'm going to be like power walking because I might have tiny legs, but I can move these things like nobody's <laughs> business. Like you, if if I was in a walking match with Usain Bolt, I'm pretty sure I could keep up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm with you there. Yeah, so I'm pacing myself, and then I, I see at least three or four people that have taken up the entirety of the sidewalk, and they are moving at a snail's pace. Like you, you can see the drool dripping off of them, dripping onto the floor, and then them sliding their feet through it. Like it's oh, it's disgusting. And you're trying to get around them, and you just can't. And it's just get the fuck out of my way. I've got places to be. You obviously don't. I have a much more enjoyable life than you at the moment. Fuck off. I couldn't agree more. I've always got um. It always seems to be shopping that I have it. I'll be walking and someone will just decide to stop walking. Oh, just, I'm going into I, I, them no matter what. Oh, mate, it's, it's even worse when you see these big burly guys and you're just like, he's keeping pace, he's keeping pace, he's good, he's good, he's good. And then he stops. You've got this mountain of a mm. fucking man with <laughs> six different shopping bags lugged over each arm, outstretched. And he's just taking in the scenery. It's like mate can you just not right now please i'm trying Short to get around it and i don't want to i don't want to say anything to you because you look like you will eat me but <laughs> could you just move out of the way please thank you well it was weird because like the other day i had it where i actually had someone who walked at the same pace as me so i'm, I'm again like i'm quite a fast walker oh so yeah I, you, you've got to, you've got to do that thing haven't you where somebody's walking at the same pace as you and one of you's got to overtake but you're yeah, not entirely sure yeah, who's got more exactly. force to do it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so that's what he was doing like, i was kind of like walking at the same pace and i was like well i can't sit at the same level at him because that's just awkward as fuck so <laughs> so i tried to big up the base a little bit but then you can kind of see him taking out again someone could be like commentary like on it like <laughs> so oh, it's, it's, it's outside the house. Yeah. <laughs> oh it's just so weird isn't it especially if you like give each other the eye halfway through yeah. you're like which one's going to do it? which one's going to do it and then you just you've got to go for it <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um, uh, the people who walk slow they piss me off they they piss me off so fucking much man like there's there's nothing else in this life that is worse than a slow walker. So that, I know that's a very broad thing to fucking say, no, especially no, with all fine. the evil and all the bad things that happen <laughs> in the world. But a slow walker is just one of those minute things in life that just pisses you off to no degree. So that is number either, one. Yeah, that's worst. number one. It's, e it's either that or seeing um, or seeing like overly entitled people acting horrible towards like retail staff and stuff like that. Because I've worked in retail for God knows how many years of my life, like longer than I've actually been in the hardcore scene. And it's always been a pet peeve for me. Whenever I go to another store or I'm just there at a corner shop and this old lady is just giving this random guy behind the counter a fucking mouthful over the fact of like 20p. I could not agree more. Yeah, we're, both, like, we're both in retail. We understand. Yeah. Yeah. It's like suck it up, love. It's <laughs> it's. This is like probably the best part of your day because you get to let out all of this aggression. He doesn't get to let out any of this aggression yep. in the next eight hours and then probably goes either to the pub or to the, wherever the fuck he's staying at the moment and mocks you in a voice. Like that is your fucking legacy with that person right now that they've gone home. They've been like, if he gets 20p extra, <laughs> that is your fucking legacy inside someone's head right now. Like, do you really want that on your fucking conscience? Those kinds of people have never worked in retail, though, and you know. Oh, you yeah. know they haven't. Yeah. Like, it's, I know it's been, like, a joke for God knows how many years, but it's like um, th there should be one day out of the entire year where retail staff can just tell you what the fuck they are <laughs> thinking yeah. about you. Like, it's the purge, but it's just for that one day of retail staff. I would love that. Like, I, I, I am very much behind that idea just because there are some people that I would love to unload on. What's the worst experience you've had then yourself? Sorry? What's the worst experience you've had yourself with a customer? Um, 
I mean, I, I've worked in like um, uh, um, deli departments. I've worked in like uh, stocking shelves on the tills and that lot. But probably the worst one is it's not so much the worst, but it's one of those really annoying things where you work in a coffee shop and then you get with some motherfucker that comes in has no idea what coffee they actually want and then comes back and complains after they've ordered a certain coffee that is not the coffee that they wanted. <laughs> it's like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do about that? That's your prerogative, <laughs> not mine. You've ordered this. You ordered a cappuccino. Yeah. Oh, there's too much foam on it. <laughs> it's a fucking foamy coffee. What do you expect? It's not a taster. <laughs> yeah. So they just come back and it's like, oh, but I wanted a black coffee. Why don't you fucking say that then? Like, what is wrong with you, honestly? What's the worst you've had, Matt? Um, I work in a phone shop at the minute and I had a woman, like, red in the face, screaming fuck you to one of my colleagues because her, <sighs> her system wouldn't let them add an Apple Watch to the contract. And I was like, this is the most privileged thing I've ever heard of, this woman red in the face. My colleague was in tears about it. Um, over yeah, an Apple Watch. That's, that's, yeah, that's privilege. By the yeah, that, that's a hundred percent privilege. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, why, why can't I have an Apple Watch on this contract <laughs> as well? I had uh, a customer at the time with me as it was happening, and uh, funnily enough, a bit of a punk kid. So he was quite cool. We were chatting about bands and stuff, and um, she obviously made so much of a scene. We were all looking at her, and uh, she used the <laughs> phrase. Uh, I am the manager of Debenhams. Now, this is no slight against Debenhams. But <laughs> I mean, do you, do you really have to prefix it with that? Not really. <laughs> not really. We're not big enough to do that, but <laughs> I'll do it anyway. Um, but the, the kid went to me. She looks like she'd be the manager of Debenhams, which <laughs> is the perfect description of how much of a cunt she was. Oh, yeah. You, you just know, like, halfway through your day, you get one of those types in and you look at them and you just go, ah, something yeah. bad is about to happen in my life right now. And she is probably going to ruin <laughs> my day just with her words. But it's okay. I'm above this. I am in retail. I will make fun of her <laughs> when she leaves. Exactly. Yeah. I will mock her later down at the pub. <laughs> and everything is going to be okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure I bought all my friends the amount of stories I come home with from work. It's ridiculous. Oh yeah, but you say bored, but you know we. Everybody loves a good, uh, good retail story. Yeah, it's a everybody good, does. It's a good bitch for myself and uh, people yeah, get to it's, realize this. It's how you like get that. that negative emotions out, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Otherwise, I'd be crying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we still all do that anyway. It's fine. It's fine. We cry just before we have to clock in. I cry during. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, you might as well make money while you're crying. Exactly. So fuck yeah, it. that's my point of view. If I'm going to feel <laughs> emotional, uh, it's in work. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't cry on your days off. <laughs> never, never. Get, uh, get paid to cry. Do it on their payroll. <laughs> oh. I've got a guy at work who pretty much gets paid to shit. He's like, yeah, yeah. mate, yeah, Wait, mate. I'm, go I'm going back well. and he's like, I'm, uh, I'm like, where How are you going? He's like, now? I'm going for a shit. And he's like, I'm like, so like you're not even gonna wait till you break. Like, I'm going for a shit. I was like, Fuck. and so if you add up all the times he's probably gone for a shit over the past year, even if it's just like five minutes or so, he's probably got paid for like at least two days worth of work <laughs> for shitting. Yeah, mate, you, you don't go for a shit or a piss on your break. You do it on their time. Straight <laughs> up. Do it for yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But Kyle, you yeah, just if said I, if you I... do that now. How do you do that now? What, me? Yeah. What, at, at this moment in time or just in general? Well, you just said you do that now. Yeah, I, I do it on other people's payroll. Yeah, it's one of those things that, you know, if you've got these the human kind of things that everybody does, like, they're not really going to tell you that you can't take shit because all you got to do is uh, turn back around and be like, well, it's either I go to the toilet now or I take a shit on the floor. Like, yeah. which, you want me to shit in front of the customer? I didn't think so. Yeah. Like, it's, which one would you prefer? Would you prefer the sanitation team to come in and sweep this all up and make a massive scene or just let me go off for five minutes and do what I need to do? An, no? an extra hot chocolate. <laughs> that is disgusting. <laughs> oh, it's the chocolate slushy right there, man. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Uh, do you reckon this is why there's uh, there's no milkshakes at McDonald's anymore? <laughs> yeah, there never <laughs> they is. There never break. is. 
Like every no. time, like they're always that, either that or it's the ice cream machine that's gone. So I think we found Matt's pet peeve. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. Fucking oh McDonald's. God, I'm glad. I'm glad we had that talk. Yeah. <laughs> it was insightful. I'm sure you didn't expect that as I rang you earlier. Mm. No, not in the slightest. It, it, it's like, um, I'm, so, I'm so happy you guys have talked to me about this now. <laughs> well, at the beginning, he was like, yeah, can we swear on the podcast? So we're just talking about shitting in cups. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad of like the, di- <laughs> the diverse nature of this entire thing has been very professional, little dip, back to being professional. Now we're, we're at ground zero, yeah. like nothing is going, nothing's going back from this. <laughs> we know each other there's way no too well way. now. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> Oh my oh. god! Uh, oh god! I can't wait until the next um, uh, next touring or EP cycle so I can get back on this podcast. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the next one already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Well, like I said, we was looking forward to seeing you in Liverpool, but like, it's just—is it just down south that you're doing now? Yeah. Oh it, yeah, the the show got pulled in Liverpool, unfortunately, yeah, and then we had it replaced with uh, Milton Keynes. But yeah. you know what? It's it's one of those admin things where the promoter was just like, you know what? It's just not going to work. Yeah. And it, to be fair, it works out a little better for us because instead of a four hour journey, we've only got an hour journey to Milton Keynes, and then we can like just pop up to Leicester, which is like an hour and twenty minutes away. Yeah, yeah. We so it's a nice little stopgap for us. Like travel wise, it makes the most sense that yeah, of all definitely. shows to get pulled. Yeah. At least it was that one. Oh yeah, but there's uh, there's been the tours before where we've travelled like on the first day for six hours. Oh my god! <laughs> and th- that's not even the worst. Like we had one, it was two thousand and. One second, I have to cycle through my head. Which girlfriend was I with at the time? <laughs> that's okay. Uh, this would have been would have been last. Yeah, it was last year. Um, May two thousand eighteen, we had. Uh, Newcastle we were supposed to be playing with playing with yeah Newcastle United we were supposed to be playing with those guys sure why not <laughs> um, uh, no, the show in Newcastle on that day got pulled so we were like you know what let's go to the Lake District middle of summer nice. football fever is like everywhere at the moment we're going to have a goddamn blast and it was fantastic pulled up right, uh, right by a little lakeside had a nice little barbecue with the guys from MTXS amazing loved every second of it next show was in Glasgow so we had to travel from the Lake District all the way up into Glasgow. Oh God. Half an hour before loading, the promoter rings us and says, yeah, the venue's pulled the show. Oh, 30 what? minutes before. 30 minutes before loading. There is us at a service station just kicking about and waiting for like an hour, two hours to see if we can find a DIY venue or a floor space or anywhere to play a show tonight because we just wanted to fucking play a show because we were so pissed off about everything. Realise nowhere is going to be able to take us. No, nowhere around. So from the like service stations that we got a fucking fine for because we were staying there for too goddamn long, we had to travel all the way back down to Sheffield oh my just God. to crash for the night. That was not a fun fucking day for any of us. That and like the in the middle of the band. Oh, I fucking was, man. Like in the middle of summer and it's like I'm sweating through my clothes on seven different layers at the moment. And it is just I'm angry. This Starbucks coolie that I've got is just not touching the sides. Nothing. <laughs> and I'm just pissed off. And then having to simmer in that fucking car for God knows how many hours as we travel back down to Sheffield just to spend a night somewhere. It was not the one. That was that was the worst trip that we had. See for that or to Carmarthen. Like Carmarthen was a bitch to get to as well. Where's Carmarthen? Uh Carmarthen's like at the like a proper eastern tip of Wales. Right. Like it's mm-hmm. it's a long, long fucking way away from Oxford. And that was literally just for a one off gig to go there and then come back that night as well. <sighs> like it was ridiculous. That is some dedication. But I suppose you do have to have that. Yeah, especially when you're starting out, it's just like, well, we've got a show in Wales. Cool, let's go play Wales. And it's kind of like that thing of, oh, yeah, we're playing that show. We're playing that show. Gets to two days before, we're just like, how fucking far is that show? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. It's a horrible, painful experience being in a band starting out, especially like, the amount you invest for how little you feel you get back at the very beginning. Yeah, man, it's it's bizarre and i don't know why we do this to ourselves maybe we're just all glut for punishment at the end of the day <laughs> maybe we really fucking are and we just kind of want to whip our backs and go this is all worth it this is all worth it this is all worth it <laughs> I, I think like this comfort in knowing that obviously that's how loads of other bands started out because um 
I remember with we was we trapped in autumn that we did it and we t- yeah. we we travelled down to London playing in our band and I think we it was like promised to be this like big show with all these other bands on and loads of other people would be there. You know how it goes when they're like yeah, people are going to yeah. be there. You you get there and it's like the bands watching themselves. Yeah, bands playing to bands. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, like they. There's proper fucking bad experiences like that. It happens all the time, and it yeah. happens to a lot of bigger bands as well. Like there was um, at one time, the our uh, drummer Kia, he went to see Thy Art Is Murder in Kent. Nice. And like Thy Art Is Murder, this massive fucking death metal band, and you're thinking, shit, they're playing in a tiny city like that. There must be fucking tons of people. You know, turn up and there was about 15 people in the room. Fuck. Jesus. What? I've never heard that for a big band like that yeah man like if you get him on the podcast uh you know for the next one because we're already planning the next one let's be honest yeah it's guaranteed we're, we're getting now. really <laughs> we're getting all, we're really getting friendly here guys like get him on the next one we'll put it on speakerphone we'll have a nice little podcast between all of us he'll be able to tell you about it because i think it was like the day after download or like one of the days before download that they'd come over and they just like you know what we're going to play a couple of extra shows playing kent sure 15 people <laughs> it's like fuck jesus what a dynamic 15 people imagine being one of those 15 people in that crowd though yeah he said it was absolutely fantastic i can imagine (laughs) yeah but like sometimes it is destroying for a band to be up the smaller bands i suppose because well yeah anyone and then it's it's, it's, yeah it's like bigger bands if it happens to them they're just like okay let's make the best of this and that to be fair that should be like the motivation behind any time that you're either playing to an empty room you're only playing to 10 or 15 people yeah like be like right these people need to be impressed because they've come specifically to watch us but when it's like a smaller band you've got these like illusions of grandeur in your head especially if you're like just starting out you're like yeah let's play this fucking show it's going to be fucking packed out and it's that kind of like that it drops your motivation for it and it's like oh god why do we fucking do this you know and it's those kind of shows where you've got to bring that extra energy because if you can get those 15 people moving and bouncing you are doing something impressive yeah that's that's always been our thing that we've we are one of those bands that is a a health and safety fucking nightmare like (laughs) we will climb we we've been known to climb up to the top of venues swinging upside down like blood and sweat just pouring off of us and we go fucking mental and if there's only five or ten people there, we're like, right, we're going to impress the fuck out of those five and ten people so that the next time that we come here, they're going to come back and see us and they're going to bring along their mates and be like, you need to see these guys. They are fucking wild. Yeah. Like, don't even listen to the music. Just look at them. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter that you're deaf. You're coming anyway. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, fuck it. <laughs> that was the sort of atmosphere I had where I remember caught of Mice and Men when they, uh, like, was, I think they just released the Flood album. Um, oh. and I was only just getting into them, but I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll go down, I'll go watch them, I'll see how it is. Um, and that, I think that was like one of my first like really like heavy gigs that I went to. Um, yeah. and there was a really small venue in Manchester called NQ Live, and um, yeah. I remember Austin Carlisle. It, it, there must have been literally like there's probably like sixty people in there, if that. And um, he was literally everyone was just throwing each other around, people crowd surfing to the stage. But the thing is, the roof was like really low. So as you was crowd yeah. surfing, your head was literally hitting the roof. Uh, and then he oh. decided to punch the air conditioning out. So then the whole room <laughs> just turned into a big <laughs> sweat box. Um, and then as we was walking out, like where the um, actual dressing room was, the, there'd been like a massive hole punched through the wall. I was like, fuck me. Well, again, like it's, it's one of those gigs that you don't forget. It, like even though it was such a like intense experience like that, it's like you won't ever forget. Yeah. That is imprinted on your mind now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, that must have been fucking chaos. No, it was just yeah. You it's can those... you can imagine if Mice and Men just all all the sort of fans as, as they're just starting out in like a small yeah. venue like that, packed out as yeah. well. It was like a sold out show. It's, it's those insane. kinds of things that you remember. I remember um, catching Dillinger Escape Plan on the last time oh. we played Download, and my fucking yeah. god, like I am not well up on the scene, but that stood out for me as an incredible yeah. Gig. Dillinger were just one of those bands, though, man. Like, yeah, they're a must see, and that's what I remember being told by everybody. Yeah, but you know what? They, did, it. they didn't disappoint. All my friends that were telling me were correct. Yeah, that's that's how you know a band is good, though. That you get told so much about them, you go and see them, and you're like, you know what? You guys were fucking right. Yeah, it's that obsession you can get with a band, and it's such a fun 
it's like you're discovering them all over again it's amazing yeah yeah man it, it really is so i'm gonna change it up a little bit here are you on, then. a horror fan i'm not a massive horror fan that's the thing and i know you guys told me about this before and I've been racking my brains being like, <laughs> oh, what, Trying to keep what conversation horror film? and think at the what, same time. Yeah, like what horror film have I either like enjoyed at least a little bit or I've enjoyed because like my girlfriend at the time has made me watch this and she's cowering. I'm just like, look at it, it's fucking fake. <laughs> um, the, prob- the only one that really springs to mind would probably be... Um, Oh, fuck, I've got a really good one in my head right now that I watched when I was really young and it nearly traumatised me. Fuck, no! Oh, this it, this is going to be... Oh, it's going to be... It's gonna be um, that's it, Jeepers Creepers. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes! That. Oh, <laughs> mate, I, watched, I watched that when I was like 12, uh, like a sleepover with one of my friends, and my God, I didn't get a, a single like hint of sleep that night. I was just like, that dude's going to come and he's going to take out my fucking eyes and skin me. <laughs> like, I I am not okay with this right now. But then I watched it a couple of years later and I was like, you know what? This is actually a really good fucking film. I actually really enjoy this. And I think it's a horror film. Like, it's a ni- it was a nice start. Yeah, it's a, that's a great horror film. It was quite original for when, uh, when it came out as well because there was a lot of like um, similar stuff coming out at the same time, a lot of slasher films and stuff, and Jeepers Creepers yeah. just changed it up for like a bit Do more. It's funny that you mentioned Jeepers Creepers. Me and my brother are very big in, um, you know, the Funko bobbleheads. Yeah. We, yeah, we I know that is. Uh, amongst us both, and um, he's found the Jeepers Creepers guy. What? You can actually oh, get one. No. And it's so good. I'll send it you both after this. <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm going to have to get that. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Did but you that, see these uh, yeah. sequels? No, I've, I've heard things about them and apparently they're not that good compared to the original. No, the second one was good, but then the third one was... No, nah. <laughs> just a little, just a little bit. I think it was straight to streaming services as well. Yeah, so that one was, yeah. 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 Oh, think, that's never that's never a good sign. That's like proper not, B yeah. movie fucking horror film. Although to be fair, there's some decent B horror movies, but it's like most of them you just nah. Yeah. It's just trash for the sake of it. And that's the aesthetic, and that's the cold kind of feel that they have for it. And you yeah. know what? If that's the aesthetic they want to go for, fucking fair play to them. But it's when a studio tries really fucking hard, and then has that like B like B movie horror fucking theme to it, and the aesthetic, and you can just tell it's like nah. Yeah. This is not authentic. Fuck off. Yeah, there's there's two kinds. There's one where like they're aiming to be this uh, you know, massive studio budget film or ones that embrace the independent B movie style yeah. film. But don't worry, you are not missing anything by not seeing the sequels. Alright, cool. I'm I'm not gonna lose any sleep like I did when I was twelve, but <laughs> no. no <laughs> That's <worry>. cool. <laughs> Oh, goodness. It's been nice talking to you guys, Matt. Have yeah. you got any other questions for me to, you know, just string along for for another 15, 20 minutes? Because I, I can always talk more. I do have an obscure one if you want my random question of the the interview podcast. Go on, then. Yeah, yeah. I'm always, I'm always up for these kind of things. Yeah. Come on, hit me with that obscurity. Okay. What do you prefer, cheese on toast or beans on toast? Cheese on toast, straight up. That was easy enough. Any sauce? Uh, a little bit of sauce. Oh, okay. I like so, it. you know... Hey, man, it's like a middle-class kind of thing, man. You know, just a little bit of Worcester sauce, you know, gives it a little bit of bite in that lot. All good. So underrated, so it's, it's, underused sauce, I think. Definitely. It's, especially if you could you dabble it on before you actually like, <laughs> get it in and toast it. You can't put it on afterwards. You've got to toast it and have it sink in, Ooh. you know? A little, little bit of salt and um, black pepper on there, maybe like a, a little couple of other garnishes and herbs on top yes, just to black, really pack it in a little pepper, bit of flavour. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, you you got to go gourmet on this shit. You can't just have <laughs> cheese on toast. you got to get gourmet. See, like, like when you start... Like ages it, ago. Like, Sorry, go on. <laughs> Jesus. No, 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 I was just about to say it's like when you do um, uh, when you have a pot noodle or something like that, you got to get the salt, pepper, you got to put a little yeah, bit of paprika yeah, yeah. or something like that in. You know, go and make up your fucking meals Make every it time. Fancy, man. Yeah. See, I think that's yeah, like exactly. a thing that you do when you get older. Because like when I was younger, I never put pepper on anything, and I always thought like, why do people yeah. bring pepper to the dinner table? But no, I just cake it and everything. Yeah. Uh, every single yeah. like piece of food I have has got pepper on it. Oh yeah, you got to garnish it, man. It always got to garnish it. 
Like that's a, that's the thing. It brings out the flavour. You never knew that when you were young. No, it's true. It's true. It's just like why why the fuck are people put salt and pepper on this shit? Like what is this? I just want to taste the flavour, and then you realise the flavour comes from the salt and pepper, and it's like, that's oh, why, yeah. I was today years old when I found this. Out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to make you cheese on toast when you next come up. Then that's gonna yeah, be definitely, easy. man. I'll yeah. be down. <laughs> we're we're going to make sure that we do a Liverpool show. Like Excellent. we've uh, we've got you now, just so I can get fed. <laughs> well, God, God, God damn knows that I don't get fed on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool or Manchester, we'll be forced to it. We don't mind. Um, I'm trying to think if we've got any Manchester shows lined up. I don't think so. I think you I are... think we might be doing it maybe in March or April. Are you I want to say. To tell us that. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sweep it away like nothing of... happened. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting a question mark at the end of things. <laughs> Just in case nothing like happens. <laughs> <laughs> just got to have that influx at, at the end of it. Just in case yeah. nothing happens. Then I was merely asking it as a question out loud. I wasn't declaring anything. <laughs> nice uh, inflection <laughs> on the end of the uh, sentence. <laughs> so what time are you uh, on stage tonight then? Uh, we're due on stage at 10 o'clock, which is... second. You've got... Um, one, yeah. God, Jesus Christ, it's been like an hour and 15 minutes that we i've been on this phone it's only like quarter past eight and i've not gotten through this beer because i've been chatting so much shit to you guys you guys are a bad influence on me you know oh, that sorry we're sobering you oh, up. yeah you really you yeah. really are i had i had six pints before this interview and now i've gone down to a third of this one pint like, what is going on guys you've got two hours to make up for it shortly oh, i know and, and i've got to go maybe. make a couple of godfathers and everything so you know man, yeah and cheese definitely. on toast <laughs> and cheese on toast oh, <laughs> mate, mate we don't uh, we i can't there's like a, a microwave here and a kettle and that's about it so i've got my pot noodles i've got some right. salt and pepper i've got i've got a gourmet that shit up but apart from that you know I'm, yeah <laughs> it, uh, we're probably doing it in birmingham i think they've got nothing in birmingham somewhere they must nice. do because birmingham <laughs> just find a random house and go in and be like, yeah, I'd, I'd need to make some cheese and toast, guys. Come on. Just knock around on strangers' doors. Can you use your yeah, oh minutes? <laughs> See if anyone answers. Be like, hey, we're a touring band and we're really hungry. Can we just cook really quickly, please? Do you know what? I think you should um, tweet it because I remember um, I'm trying to think of this woman's name, but I was studying it in a uni. This woman did a whole tour, just couch surfing. Yeah, where she... Oh, I know who you're on about. It's Amanda I, something. I studied that. Yeah. Um, it wasn't Samantha Fraser or something like that, was it? No, I, I want to say Amanda Palmer, something like that. Oh, yeah, it is Amanda Palmer. Yeah. yeah. And she tweeted like every night that if she wanted a snack or anywhere to stay or yeah. if she could just like wash her clothes or something like that. And like she did it in every single city. Every night she managed that's to mad. have somewhere to stay and she was fed. Wait, so she, yeah, she was on tour like... Yeah, just, and she hadn't pre-booked any accommodation. It was literally just winging it last nothing minute. Nothing whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. Although, Whoa. although to be fair, it's a lot easier doing it as like a solo act rather than having like four people yeah. in the tour driver. Like one person staying over is like, all right, cool, yeah, I can manage that. And having five sweaty guys come over with a load of gear mm -hmm. in a van is like, it's a bit much sometimes. That's a bit intimidating to walk into your living room too of morning, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, like, like uh, take this conversation like. We're lovely. Oh we yeah, definitely, chat. absolutely. We can yeah. talk. <laughs> but in general, consensus of looking at us as being like dirty little hobo-looking guys, like we're really fucking sweaty after a show, and be like, "Yeah, we're gonna stay here tonight." Well, it's again, like, it's, okay. it's one of those those people never know because, like, in future, obviously, you guys blow up even more. It's one of those stories they can tell because I know there's one story with Green Day from, uh, uh, basically, we're from a, a place called Wigan. And uh, Green yeah. Day played a few small shows in Wigan back in the 90s. And there's a guy who, who tells, tells his story of when um, on Christmas Eve, Green Day played a show in Wigan. And yeah. they came and stayed, like, well, they were like couch surfing. They came and stayed on uh, his sofa that night. And he, um, he put his kids to bed and he was upstairs with his wife. And he um, apparently they was all messing around downstairs. And he said he came downstairs, told them to shut up or else he'll uh, hit them with a machete. <laughs> And they and they Green Day have told that story like ever since, which is crazy. But imagine being that guy. And I was like, yeah, Green Day uh, slept on my couch. Yeah, <laughs> that's well, that's a mental story. It's that crazy, is crazy. Yeah, on Christmas Eve as well. Imagine waking up Christmas Day to so, like Billy Joe and all that downstairs. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking. That's weird. That's such a weird story. I love it. Love that. <laughs> right. Um. I, I guess we'll wrap it up there anyway. We'll let you yeah, get on I with mean, it. It's, 
it's, it's been a delightful hour and 20 minutes with you guys, I We've must say. loved it, so thank you so much for doing this. That's but... all right. Get get in contact with Johnny again and like schedule this up. Or just, you've got my phone number. I have now. You yeah. guys got my phone number. You know, send me over a text and be like, yeah, can you be on the podcast tonight? Ah, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, of course I fucking will. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Um, what's your... Uh, you've got some pints to finish up now. Some pints? Uh, some pints? Yeah, the... Yeah. the the lukewarm fosters that i've got in my hand right <laughs> nice, now yeah uh, do you have any routine before you're about to go on the show or is it just down in pints and it's, uh, no 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 it's <laughs> it's very uh, it's <laughs> i'd love to say that that's not part of it but fuck me is it <laughs> touring is just another excuse to drink with the homies that is that it's, is it's bonding. the most it is. Um, generally speaking, it's more about doing the warm-ups. I'm one of those people that will do my vocal warm-ups. I will do my stretches. And it's kind of like just getting into that mental like headspace and being prepared and ready for everything. Kind of like not so much doing meditation, but very much getting into my own head and zoning out and zen. But apart from that, right it's mostly that. drinking. <laughs> mostly <laughs> drinking and enjoying, uh, enjoying some delightful conversations. You know, it's just one of those things. I don't. I don't have anything like set out for like five hours worth of like meditation and yoga, and then I have to do this, and then I have to do that. Otherwise, I'm not going to be ready for the stage. It's none of that bullshit. We just try and keep it as real as fucking possible. I like it, man. Unless you're Ozzy Osbourne, you're taking a lot of oxygen before you go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, stay on as a, as we say goodbye, because I do want to mention a few things to you. Um, Okie dokie. But. Thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate mate, it. Mate, no worries. Like I said, I've I've always got ample time to do this kind of stuff and just chat absolute bullshit with you guys whenever you want to do it. We'll honestly. Make, we'll make you regret that sentence. <laughs> no, you I'm gonna make I'm, I'm gonna make you regret it for accepting it. <laughs> well, I'll very happily have you on again, mate. Um Thank you. I'm Thank loving you. the the EP by the way. It's sick. Thank you. No, no, sick was on safety first. <laughs> ah, yeah. I like it. Yeah. Cheesy jokes. Oh, my God. I've got another Fosters that has just come towards me. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it could have been a lot worse, couldn't it? Did anyone hear that? Yeah. All right, cool. That's on, is that on the podcast? It is, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> if they can't hear it when I go to edit, I'll just compress it so it is just that. What, uh, what compressed dicks I think we've all got compressed dicks <laughs> <laughs> well um, that was a good note to end the podcast on anyway yeah compressed That's compressed right. dicks <laughs> compressed dicks <laughs> thank you very much Kyle enjoy your show That's tonight right. and enjoy the rest of the tour guys as well we will do you guys enjoy the podcast and editing this to whatever degree you really feel it needs to be done <laughs> it's very lazy I'll be honest before you do <laughs> Is yeah. there anything you need to mention? Um, no, not at the moment. I mean, I could just run through where we're touring to, depending on when this uh, this podcast is going to go out. When's it going to go out? That is a tricky question. I think it'll be in two weeks' time. So, All right, so there's no point in going no. through where we're going to be touring to because everybody's going to either have seen the show or been like, ah, oh, I probably should have gone to that show. Yeah, a little late. At that point. <laughs> Um, no, it's just that um, loss is out now. Hit up on all of the streaming, downloading websites as you usually do. Um, uh, check out Still Breaks My Heart featuring Liam Cormier from Cancer Bats and Guilt as Our Two Singles. And yeah, like thank you guys for letting me on the podcast. Oh, thank you for answering the phone and coming on to it. We really appreciate <laughs> that. Uh, say answering the phone. I had to call you guys back. That's true, actually, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I take that back. <laughs> cool. No, thank you guys. Appreciate it. No, thanks, thanks a lot, mate. That was episode 21 of an Earful podcast with Kyle of Misery. And go stream that EP to death because it is fantastic. Yeah, it seems like they put a lot of hard work into, uh, into that. And go check out their song featuring Cancer Bat vocalist as well. Yeah, it's a banger. And don't forget to check us out on our socials, um, Facebook and Instagram under an Earful podcast. And make sure you check out our Spotify or other podcasting platforms to listen to this episode and the other episodes as well. Thanks. Thanks.